Hey, Bruce Naylor, welcome to the Frugal Tech channel. This week I'm answering some viewer questions, and the first one comes from Dick Ofole, who I think I've answered a question for before. Anyhow, Dick Ofole writes, are you getting some revenue from your channel, or is it more a volunteering endeavor at this time? Hey, great question, and let me tell you that, first off, it was never my intent to make money off my YouTube channel, and if that would have been the case, I would have done things a little bit differently. Actually, I've been around since uh, 2008 on YouTube, but uh, it wasn't only until a few years ago that I became a uh, YouTube partner that allowed me to monetize some of my videos. That being said, yes, I do make a small amount of money on my videos. It's enough for a nice dinner once a month for me and my wife, or if I want to get a little bit of new gear, like I just bought an Aspen lav mic, so yeah, my earnings are not that much. As a matter of fact, uh, you get paid what's called a CPM, which is uh, you know clicks per thousand on your advertising. And that, that number has actually went down over the last year by about a third, and so has my earnings, even though my views and subscribers have went up. And I think that's because there's just so many people out there fighting for those advertising dollars. And that's why some of them are turning to things like selling merchandise, affiliate marketing, uh, paid sponsorships, Patreon, sponsor videos, all those sort of things. So to be clear with everybody right now, it is as of today, it's not my intention to, to do any of those things with the channel. Okay, the next question comes from Brad Chandonnet. And Brad writes, can you use a Logitech G710 with the MacBook Pro? He says, I'm looking for a good mechanical keyboard for programming on my MacBook. Does the Windows key map to the command key in OS X? The answer to both questions is yes and yes. However, there are some things you should be aware of. Now, when you're talking about the G710, that is a gaming mechanical keyboard from Logitech. And it comes with the Cherry MX Blue keys, so it's going to be super clicky. But a lot of the space used on that keyboard, and it is a substantial keyboard, is used for gaming with programmable macro keys and what they call G keys. I have the G710, which I dearly love on my gaming PC. And uh, I have the gaming software pre-installed on it. And I really like this keyboard. Nice lighting on this, very, very responsive keys and so forth. I'm curious as to why you might not consider a mechanical keyboard Abs that is absolutely made for a Mac. And one example is the DOS uh, S series mechanical keyboard for the Mac. It's just about the same price as the Logitech keys. It's smaller, and DOS has an excellent reputation for their mechanical keyboards. Everything's all ready to go. It's all set up from the Mac from the get-go. And seeing how your primary use case is going to be for programming and not gaming, I think it makes a lot more sense. And aesthetically speaking, you can get white or black, so it's going to look really sharp with your MacBook Pro. Okay, the next question comes from Super Fifth Gear. How are you doing, Super? You've been a great contributor to my channel, by the way. Thank you very much. And Super Fifth Gear wants to know, says, I would love to see the video editor comparison on Sony Movie Studio compared to Vegas. I have Vegas, but would like to see how it compares at $40. It sounds great. How does the user experience compare? Is it down to use like Vegas with buttons everywhere? What features are missing? Rendering times compared to other editors. All right. One of the things I really enjoy for some weird reason is goofing around with different editors out there, but ultimately I'm a Final Cut Pro 10 user or X or however you want to say. That's ultimately what I use. But I was looking around for another editor to run on my Windows machine just in case something happened to the MacBook Pro and, I, you know, whatever. And I stumbled across a sale on Movie Studio. So I downloaded a demo unit and I'm going, wow, this uh, looks a lot like uh, Vegas as I remember it. And sure enough, it turns out that Movie Studio essentially is Vegas, but with a lot of features disabled. Same code base. That's very interesting. Movie Studio Platinum is their consumer video editor, right? So it's essentially Vegas, but with a lot of features taken away and some tweaks to the interface, including really large buttons now for touch screen devices. That's one of the, the things there. When you install Vegas, it does look confusing. It reminds me of an old program I used to use called Goldmine. Buttons everywhere. 
And they've cleaned a lot of that up in the Movie Studio Platinum product, but most of that functionality is still there. there. And you used to be able to add those buttons back to the toolbar, but apparently they've taken that away. Now, getting to some of your specific questions, rendering time with uh, Vegas and Movie Studio Platinum are exactly the same. You do have more codecs available to you in Vegas than you do Movie Studio. I'll just refer to it as Movie Studio. Now, I actually bought the Movie Studio Suite, and that includes the following programs, and I had to write a list here because you get a ton, and I got it all on sale for like 79 bucks. And I got Movie Studio 13 Platinum, DVD Architect Studio, uh, Soundforge Audio, and Acid Music Studio, plus I got like 50 royalty-free music tracks, 1,001 loops and sounds, there was a plug-in from Isotope. Movie Studio runs pretty well on my gaming machine. The render times, I'm going to say right now, it is, is not very good. Uh, at best, I got, it was a 5-minute 1080p video rendered MP4 to uh, H264, uh, and it took about 7 minutes, 6 and a half minutes to render. I'm telling you right now, uh, Premiere Pro renders much more quickly, and Final Cut Pro 10 is the speed champion when it comes to rendering video, probably because it's optimized so well for Mac hardware. Some of the Pro features you don't get with Movie Studio are things such as your scopes. You don't have those, but you have almost all the other color correction tools built in. Other than that, uh, the other things I found that is missing doesn't have quite as many codecs, uh, it limits you on the number of video tracks you have unlimited with Pro. You think you can have up to 20 with Vegas. There's uh, you can't really extend Movie Studio like you can with other third-party uh, add-ons. But here's the most most interesting thing. I think for the price, for uh, uh, most people, I think it's a especially for YouTubers. I think it's a pretty good good value. It's fairly intuitive to learn how to cut video with, with uh, Movie Studio. All in all, I'm impressed with what you get for the money with Movie Studio. Highly recommend the suite if you go all in. But I will tell you that some of the software has not been updated in a long time. That's kind of my overall opinion of Movie Studio versus Vegas. Thank you so much for your questions. I look forward to your comments down below. And uh, until the next one, everybody, take care.